How's it going guys? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. We have a lot more to talk about iOS 14. This time we're gonna talk more about software. The other day we talked about hardware, but software is definitely going to be interesting with iOS 14. So let's just run down the list of some of the things that we can expect based on code that we have seen uh, in iOS 14. First one is wallpaper changes. Now in iOS 13, wallpaper is essentially split into three different categories. You have dynamic, you have stills, and you have live. And under, for instance, stills, you have a variety of different wallpapers. You have flowers, you have like the moon, the earth, you have other abstract designs and things of that nature. And of course you can add your own photos as well. But in iOS 14, Apple's gonna switch things up a little bit for the better. Code indicates that we'll see specific categories like earth and moon, flowers, etc. In other words, there's gonna be better organization for wallpapers in iOS 14. In addition, it looks like third parties are gonna be able to add their own wallpaper collections and integrate them directly inside settings wallpaper. So when you think about it, it kind of makes sense that Apple is going the category route. If you're gonna be able to add wallpaper packs from third parties, then it would make sense to have those packs sorted and organized by category or by name. Personally, I think it's a pretty good idea. Having wallpaper organized and categorized based off the type sounds like a really good idea to me. And especially does it sound good to have third party wallpapers integrated directly inside the settings app, which will make it a lot less convoluted to add third party wallpaper to your home screen or to your lock screen. The next feature indicates that Apple plans on taking its shot on iPhone social media campaign to the next level in iOS 14. Because from what we've seen, it looks like Apple will integrate shot on iPhone challenges directly inside the Photos app. So that means that users will be able to directly see and submit shot on iPhone challenges directly from the stock photos app. Now, historically, Apple hasn't been very great at social, but uh, Shot on iPhone has been a fairly successful campaign by all estimates, and having the ability to submit challenges directly within the photos app is a great idea because no longer do you have to rely on third-party social media applications in order to participate. So I think it's a win-win for both users and for Apple. Prior to iOS 13, accessibility settings were buried deep within the settings app. You had to go to settings, then you had to go to general, then you had to go to accessibility. But in iOS 13, accessibility was promoted. Now it's right under the main default root settings app. And in iOS 14, Apple is going to continue to build on accessibility settings. Note some of the features we can expect here based on code findings. These findings indicate that there will be a new feature that will automatically detect important sounds like fire alarm norms or the doorbell or even a crying baby or door knocks or sirens and presumably iOS will be able to translate these alerts into haptics for those that are hard of hearing. So this is a really cool feature, really cool extension of accessibility in iOS 14. Additionally, iOS 14 code indicates the ability to run an audiogram on device to help users tune audio. So Apple has always taken accessibility very seriously and they continue to do so in iOS 14 and I think it's a great thing. Now in iOS 13, there's currently no way to view all of your apps at the same time and launch apps from that view. Android has something called, I think it's called the app drawer, where you can actually see a list of all the apps you have installed on your Android device and launch apps directly from there. Now in iOS, you can of course search for a specific app via Spotlight search and then launch an app from Spotlight. But there's no real list view like you get in watchOS or like you get from a typical Android device. But in iOS 14, we should expect such a feature. For example, you'll be able to filter all apps that have unread notifications and view those all together and launch those apps if you wish to. You'll also be able to filter apps by recently used, so that'll quickly allow you to see which apps you're using a lot and which apps you aren't using a lot. And then there will be new Siri smart suggestions that will actually suggest which apps to launch from this view based on things like location or time of day. For example, when you arrive at the gym, iOS 14 could suggest that you open the music app to listen to music while you work out. Now in a previous video, we talked about the upcoming iOS 14 feature that will bring rich system-wide support for mouse cursors and gestures. Now this will be particularly useful for the iPad coupled with that upcoming smart keyboard with built-in trackpad. But here's something new. iOS 14 will also bring new trackpad gestures that will allow you to quickly switch between applications 
using that upcoming smart keyboard. So I imagine this will work very similar to what we have currently in Mac OS, where you can use the magic trackpad to quickly switch between full screen applications using gestures. Folks, it seems like iPad OS 14 is going to take the iPad to just a whole, a whole new level that we haven't seen before on Apple's tablet. iOS 12 was a big step forward. Obviously, iOS 13 was a major step forward as far as iPad gaining its own operating system with iPad OS, gaining much more functionality with multitasking and things like that. But I think that's all gonna sound pretty quaint compared to what we're gonna see in iOS or iPad OS 14 with relation to multitasking, precision control, just having an overall better, more laptop-like experience for those that wish to use their iPad as a laptop replacement. That's not to say that gestures or that touch input is gonna play second fiddle. That will still be the primary way to use your iPad, but having this built-in trackpad support, having that built-in cursor support so you can pair a mouse, is gonna make a big difference. Now I feel like I still have to compromise a little bit when I'm deciding whether or not I should take just my iPad on a trip or if I should take both my iPad and my MacBook Pro. Usually I opt for the latter because I just feel like iPad OS and the iPad in general just isn't quite there yet as far as being a, a laptop replacement. I know some people will disagree, but to me it still feels like you have to jump through a lot of hoops just to get basic things done. Um, so I'm not saying that this will completely solve all those issues, but this is definitely a big step in the right direction, having that precision control that you just don't get from touch input. This is a big deal, and I think it's gonna be very well received once iPad OS 14 and those new smart keyboards launch. Do you know what else gets a big update in iOS 14? HomeKit. Yes, HomeKit will get big upgrades for Apple TV audio, cameras, and lighting in iOS 14. First of all, there's something like night shift for HomeKit lighting in iOS 14, where your lighting will basically change throughout the day to reflect the ideal color temperature, but it will happen incrementally. So it won't be this, this abrupt change all at once, but the, the lighting will change throughout the day, similar to what we have on a Mac or on an iOS device. So during the daytime, you want lights that are going to reflect a, a daytime color temperature, right? So that means like 5,600 Kelvin uh, to mimic that outdoor lighting. Uh, and that's ideal during the day. But as it gets darker during the nighttime, you want a warmer color temperature. So cooler during the day, warmer during the night. So that Kelvin value is gonna go down as you know, the evening progresses and as it gets darker outside. Now, of course, with HomeKit currently, you can adjust color temperature of your lights manually. You can also set up triggers, like for instance, when it hits sunset, go ahead and change the color temperature of my lights automatically. But there's no way to really, outside of some third-party applications, there's no way to incrementally or over time change the color temperature. And that's a new feature that we're gonna see in HomeKit for iOS 14 coming up. So in other words, you'll be able to gradually change the color color temperature via HomeKit in iOS 14. Now that's not the only new HomeKit feature coming in iOS 14. You can also expect an improvement to HomeKit cameras. Now in iOS 13, we got that new HomeKit secure video feature, but Apple is expanding its HomeKit camera features in iOS 14. One new item that sounds very interesting is face identification. So this will allow you to actually, or allow HomeKit to actually recognize specific faces on these HomeKit cameras. So for instance, say you had a camera at your front door that was HomeKit capable, that camera could actually recognize your wife or your children and actually alert you based on who's at your front door. So it could say, hey, John, little Johnny's at the front door or Sally's at the front door or your wife's at the front door. And then you would know that they got home safely, which sounds great, right? This is just one of the features, but we can expect HomeKit secure video to get a big boost in iOS 14. And then one more feature to talk about is HomePod Apple TV speaker enhancements. Code indicates that tvOS 14 will feature a new permanent audio output option for Apple TV boxes. So why would that be useful? Well, consider this for example. You have a couple of HomePods, they're paired together as a stereo pair, and you like to output your movies via those HomePods. Well, right now that's possible, but it's kind of finicky. A lot of times you'll lose the connectivity or if you start using those home, home pods for something else, then you have to repair manually. It's just not very um, user friendly, I guess you could say. But in iOS 14, it looks like you're gonna be able to set up a permanent connection wirelessly, of course, thanks to new HomeKit, tvOS, iOS 14 improvements.
And then the final thing we're gonna talk about in this video, not exactly the most exciting thing, but there will be a new augmented reality application for iOS 14, codenamed Gobi. Now this new augmented reality app will allow users to get more information about the world around them using a new augmented reality experience on iPhone. And of course, this will be a part of Apple's upcoming AR headset initiative as well. Now, based on 9 to 5 Mac code findings, Apple appears to be testing integrations with Apple stores and Starbucks. So for instance, you'd be able to hold up your phone in an Apple store and then get details on all the products around you just by doing that. So that means you would quickly get pricing details, be able to compare features between two items, etc. And it looks like at least select third-party companies will be able to provide their own tag identifiers, which will load up custom some assets for scenery at their particular stores, for instance. Starbucks being one of those in early testing. It's not clear if Apple will open this up to more third parties, but Starbucks definitely looks like they are one of them. So folks, that is a wealth of new iOS 14 information. And of course, we do have more coming down the pipeline. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also thumbs up if you appreciated this video. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. What new iOS 14 feature are you most looking forward to? Let me know as well. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.